how do I shift my mind from an employee mindset to an entrepreneur mindset? If you have been an uh, employee and you know how that works in, as an employee, you will come in, you have been given certain tasks. So you know exactly what to do. And if you come in, you don't know what to do, your supervisor or manager will tell you what you need to work on, right? You are giving certain tests, you were, you were told to do certain things, right? So that is employee, as being an employee, okay? Um, another thing about being an employee is that, you know, you have been, you have always been evaluated by the work that you do, right? So whether you are doing a great job or you are not doing a great job, one way or the other, you will have someone will come and tell you. Let's say if you make a mistake, you're doing something, you make a mistake, your supervisor or your manager will come and tell you. Um, if you have a good supervisor or good manager, they will actually come and tell you, say, hey, Candace, you made a mistake here. This is what you need to do, right? If you did a great job, if you have a good employee, your uh, if you have a good boss, a good supervisor, and all of that, you would tell you would actually be told that you know what you have you have done a great job. I, I appreciate your, the work that you've done. So I have been on both sides, right? I, I I have been an employee, and I have boss and I have supervisor, and you know like let me give you an example. Like when I was a teacher. You know, I, my job description was me teaching five classes to, per day, different, you know, in math, but different subjects. I know exactly what I need to do because I have been given that job. I had a job description. I know what I need to do, but I also know what, what is not my job. I don't need to, I don't, I don't sweep the floor, right? I don't go make lunch for the kid because that's not my job description. If I was done, and, and at the end, if I was done a good job, my boss would come and tell me, Candace, you did a great job, excellent. If I had made a mistake, I was told that, you know what, this is the, mis you know, you made this mistake, this is the way it's supposed to be done, right? And I have done the same thing. I have been somebody's boss before. I have been somebody's supervisor, manager, vice president before. And I would do the same thing. I would go and talk to the, the employee. I would let them know what is their job description and how well they perform in that job. That is employee, right? Because we, as an employee, you have a certain expectation. You were told, you know, you were told you have a certain expectation, right? Now for entrepreneur, if you were working for yourself as an entrepreneur, a lot of people's it's very hard for a lot of people to make that shift, right? Because as an entrepreneur, especially you working for yourself, like me, I have a business for myself, and most of the time I do it by myself. Yes, I do have a team, but in order for me to grow, in order for my business to grow, and relies on my my work and my effort, day, my daily effort. But a lot of people are not used to do that, and the problem with people trying to shift their, change their mindset from employee to entrepreneur is that they don't know what they need to do. What should I be working on? Have you ever, have you ever get up as an entrepreneur, you get up and you feel as, what should I be working on? And then, you know, you're thinking, I need to work on this. And the next thing you know, an hour or two later, you have watched a lot of funny video on Facebook on YouTube, you have read a lot of different things, watching a lot of different things, but you haven't completed tests, right? Because nobody tell you what to do. You are your own boss. You are the CEO of your business. You have to be the one that I gotta go and find a good uh, a cell phone holder so that I could actually do Facebook Live with good lighting, right? I have to actually do research on which one I should be using by asking people, by seeing what other people are doing, right? So that's number one. You have, you, you become the, the, the person who's purchasing the office supplies, right? And you will be the person who delivery the goods. So if somebody was buying, a, you know, buying a product for me, I responsible to deliver the good. Meaning like with me, even though my, my, my business, some, some of the stuff are automated, people could actually buy a course for me 
without talking to me. They could still buy a course from me. They could join my business without talking to me. However, I still have to deliver it good. Let's say if somebody become, become my coaching client, I have to be responsible with the contract. I have to be responsible to talk to people and get them in and understand the contract and all of that. Question I was asked is that, how do I shift from that mindset that you know, nobody tell me what to do now. I'm, I'm an employee. I'm, I'm an entrepreneur. Nobody tell me what to do as an entrepreneur. How do I handle this? This is why I find people having hard time shift from the employee mindset to entrepreneur mindset. It's not that you have to shift your mindset. It is understanding what you need to work on to achieve your goal. I understand that in order for me to achieve certain goal, let's say if I want to be a six figure income earner in my business, I know my goal is that I need to set up the funnel. I need, I need to continue producing valuable content to different channels. So I have, um, I'm working on my YouTube channel. I'm working on Facebook. I'm working on Twitter. And every single day, I know exactly what I need to work on. I know I need to work on video, right? Today, it's not my video day. Today is not my video day. Today is the day for me to plan. As an entrepreneur, you have to learn how to schedule yourself. You cannot have every single day waking up with that game plan. And here's another thing why entrepreneur especially for those entrepreneurs coming from employee mindset and now full-time entrepreneur, they felt lost is that not only they don't have a game plan when they wake up in the morning to, you know, so that they could feel that they know exactly what they need to do. You got to have a game plan. Another thing is that they, they are used to having people watching over them, right? Nothing is wrong with having people watching over you. But you got to understand that you are look, you are seeking for validation from other people that does not matter to you. And that's what's holding a lot of people back because they're seeking the, they're seeking validation in the wrong place. There are some, some, some of the entrepreneur, every time they did a Facebook live, let's say if this is Facebook live, they did a Facebook live. And then they sit there waiting for people to comment on the Facebook live to tell them, oh my goodness, this is a great Facebook live. I like the content that you put it out there. You're seeking for validation. See, here's how I do it. I do Facebook live because there's something. I do Facebook live either number one, because somebody have asked me this question and I answer the question or number two, I personally have experienced this and I want to share my experience so that other people could be benefit from my personal experience. I am not looking for validation from other people. It is nice to have people view your video because you got to have eyeballs on you. However, do not allow that to stop you from doing certain things that move you forward. Another thing people having trouble shipping from employee mindset to entrepreneur mindset is really because they feel alone because it's when you are building business, whether it's an affiliate marketing business, a network marketing business, even though a lot of people say, yeah, we have a wonderful team. Team is great, but you're still working by yourself a lot of time. So sometimes you feel lonely when you're doing stuff like that. This is why a lot of people are looking for a community they could plug in. So if you want, if you are struggling between uh, you, if, if you are struggling, uh, going from employee to entrepreneur, you definitely need that community where you could be, where you can get support. Um, you can get mentor, but you also have accountability partner that will help you grow. Another thing from employee to entrepreneur that people felt lost is that because they don't know the activity, they are confused. So you have to learn to find the pocket of your time. How do you, how do you utilize those time? Uh, a lot of people have asked me about my DMO. How do I handle it? How do I know what to do? Have you ever feel as I don't know exactly what I do need to do? So 
I know I have a few things on, on, on my plate right now that I need to accomplish before I go to sleep tonight. Today I have already edited two videos. I have one more video that I need to edit. That's my goal today. Edited three video. I have two emails that I need to send out. So I need to do that two email. I know I have to do a Facebook Live on this topic. It just matter when. And everybody has different schedule and everybody run their business different. I run my business based on my kids' need. I run my business based on my schedule. I have been silently working on project all day. Now I'm about to make dinner. This is where my kids are home. They're playing on their own thing. I have a little bit of time to myself. I do my video. I talk to you guys. I have um, I have a message that I have to send out to my list and I'm going to send that out. So those are the things that I know I need to work on. But I know right now, as soon as I get off this video, I will not be working on those. Because right now, this time, this pocket of time between now to 9 o'clock tonight, this pocket of time are for my kids. And I will not be working on those. Before my kids come home, it was a portion of time was for my mom and then it was for myself to do some quiet planning work. So you need to start recognizing your pocket of time. Another thing from employee to entrepreneur that people felt lost, they have gotten into way too many things or way too many platform. Um, now they don't know how to where and they don't know how to create the contents they don't know what type of content is fit for them so here's a few things right if you this is a suggestion that i have for you you know you know if you are one of those people that you're struggling uh, because you're waiting for someone to tell you post this and all of that it's really because you have not find your voice you have not find your brand so you're waiting for that you're waiting for someone to say post this you're waiting for someone to say do a video on this but if you find your voice if you find your brand you find your passion then you will not need someone to tell you if you have not established a brand if you don't know who's your target audience you will always go you will always fall back to the trap of what should I do? What message should I send out? How, you know, if you're on social media, you will probably feel as what type of content should I put it out there? If you know your brand, if you know your, your target audience, you know the subject that you want to talk about, you, you, you know if it's health and wellness is something that you are passionate about and that's your brand. I mean, if you brand yourself as one of the health and wellness person, but don't don't go and brand yourself as health uh, a health coach because I bet you thousands of people out there are health coach. Gotta be, gotta be a little bit nailed down a little bit more. If you are health and wellness, if you are in the health and wellness, right? You're passionate about health and wellness. And let's say if you 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 like to work with female, then you know you know because you pick that target audience and pick that subject of health and wellness because those are your passion then you should actually know what they're struggling with. Then you develop content based on that. If you are young college kids who's building, let's say a travel business, your content right now should be how should, you know, what are the exotic places college kids go for spring break? What do we need to watch out when we go on vacation? So those are tied to topic that you should, those type of content. Listen, if you know your brand, you know your target audience, you do not need to wait for people to tell you what to do. The last thing that I could give you is that don't be all over the place. Just because people have, have success in Instagram, you don't have to jump into Instagram. You could stay on Facebook. Just because people have success in LinkedIn doesn't mean that you have to jump there as well. Find one platform, master that platform, and then go on to another one. Don't jump all over. People cannot build their business because they're jumping all over the places. And this is when they say, okay, what should I do? Somebody better tell me what should I post on Instagram, on Facebook, and on this and that. 
don't make it harder than, than it is. Any single platform that you're on, there's plenty of potential. It's just a matter of you knowing your brand, knowing your message, knowing your target audience, then you will never need anybody to tell you. Once you put out good content out there, you don't have to go out there and seek for validation from other people. People will give you the validation. People find that you are valuable. People find that they could relate to you. They will come to you. You don't have to go out there and seek for validation. I hope this video helped you guys. If you find this video is useful, be sure to share this video and you know, let me know, drop in the comment, let me know if you like this video, okay? With that being said, guys, this is Candace. I'm signing off.